Hey guys, uh, how's it going? This is Fridays with XHU98, number 43, and uh, we have a pretty good show tonight. Uh, it's pretty late for some of you guys, but uh, thank you so much for coming, and as always, uh, this is XHU98. Uh, thank you for uh, being a part of my show on Twitch. Now, this will be uploaded to YouTube later, but uh, we're going to have a Quite, we're gonna have quite a lot of good vibes here, and um, all right, let's get ready for this. And today with us on the show is Sean Ray. He's known as Clausius, and yeah, say hi to people. Hey uh, everyone. So how are you doing? I am doing good. I am doing good. How are you doing? I am. Uh, I am escaping from my losing streak, which is always good. <laughs> um, yeah, I haven't I have been playing Go as intensely as you know a few weeks ago because I'm I'm just bothered by all the by, by all the uh, stress that is going on. Uh, oh. Junior year is always tough in high school. Oh um, man, wait till senior year. Well, senior year actually isn't that. Bad, in, like in my case. Um, I know I have like college applications coming up, but uh, it actually it actually isn't that bad. <laughs> so yeah, uh, hopefully things will work out. And uh, I'm having a quite quite a busy time on OGS. It's always glad to see the number of uh, users growing and people enjoying this beautiful game uh, on this beautiful server. And thanks to Anouk always for uh, sending the um, the banner. So yeah, we're gonna have quite a good time. Uh, so, well, before we actually start, um, is there anything you would like me to advertise? Because I know, because I know there you've you've been uh, you've been starting a streamers group, right? Uh huh. Uh, yeah, that's the Facebook streamers uh, group, or basically Facebook streamers. It's uh, a place where those who stream can post their videos and post their streaming schedules on Facebook. Uh, I'll post a link in the Twitch chats mm -hmm. um, right here. Right. Uh, you have to ask to join, but I pretty much approve everyone, so it just <laughs> gave me like a day to approve it, but... Um, I don't know why it does that. I can't make figure out how to make it like just auto add people, but uh, everyone everyone can join. But to get permission to edit the Google documents, you have to be an actual streamer, and then you have to private chat me. But uh, I'm hoping to get other streamers to uh, edit their stuff on the Google doc documents. That way, you can see where who streams when, and you can see their content on that page. That sounds pretty cool, and. Uh, I don't know. You have other things to announce? Um, that's uh, my Patreon in the 2015. Uh -huh. Oh my god, I see myself on screen. Um, yeah. So, uh, Sean has a uh, has a YouTube channel and as well as the Twitch channel. So uh, he has weekly lectures. Um, they are great. You should check them out. And if you support the work we're doing, you should go uh, support us on uh, Patreon. It's a really cool platform for supporting the the uh, the content contributors you like. And even one dollar would make a great difference. And um, thank you so much for that. And um, well, enough for advertising. <laughs> 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 All right. Yeah, cause I, cause I know you have a, you have a lot of things going on, right? Uh, we're yeah. we're we're both pretty active in terms of, you know, making things happen for the for the stream for the streaming community, I guess. All right, so should we do it? All right, I'm ready to go. And oh, actually, um, yeah. So I have this huge announcement <laughs> to make. Uh, Okay, I, I've been I've been hinting at this for quite a while, um, so I, I've never told anyone like about this before. Just like this is pretty exciting. 
So, um, you ready for this, Sean? I don't know, man. Are you pregnant or something? I, I don't know what's coming. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Um, well, yeah, so, um, I should actually switch to my, uh, screen view. Because, uh, my face is too big on the screen. Um, alright, so, there we go. So as you guys know, I've been I've been streaming for uh, 43 weeks in a row, and uh, it's it's really awesome to see all of you guys here. And um, like I I guess, I guess since I started you know making stuff since day one, it's it's always been a great pleasure to you know contribute content uh, to the community and see my work recognized and liked by people. And I, I really, I really, really appreciate all the support. And um, as you guys know, the number of streamers and teachers in this community is gradually increasing, and that's it. That's always a phenomenal thing to uh, take note of. And I think many of us, including Sean, uh, you know, spend our spend our free time and create awesome stuff for you guys to watch and learn. And we we also learn a lot from our results. So, yeah. Uh, okay. So here's what I decided to do. Um, in in February 2015, we actually had a Creators Invitational. So this was a tournament uh, with eight streamers. We had we had lots of fun playing the tournament. Uh, the final is actually still going on. Uh, we still have one more game to play, but uh, it has been quite a fun tournament so far, and um, it's basically a tournament be between streamers uh, to talk about their games. They sometimes they broadcast, and it's just a great, it's just such a great thing to watch, and it brings so much hype. Um, so what? So over the over the past two months, I've been organizing this. And so I'm pleased to announce that uh, starting from June 2015, we're going to have a brand new uh, Creators Invitational with 32 players. Um, yeah, I've come a long way just inviting everyone. <laughs> um, yeah, so if you go to uh, our website, um, give me a stock. You go to our website, uh, pinago.org slash 2015CI, stands for Creators Invitational. Uh, this is basically the, the, a very brief web page I made for the, for the tournament. And uh, in, the, in the next few weeks, there will be more great things to, to, to be announced. And as you can see, this is a brief glimpse of, of the... Uh, of the tournament, so you can find every, every bit of information up there, and this tournament is going to be held on OGS, so we're going to have a lot of fun uh, watching and playing and talking about auto games, and it's I hope it's going to be a great tournament. So yeah, that was that was my announcement. Um, <sighs> I made it, but. Yeah, I don't know, Sean. What do you, what do you think? What do you think of this? Are you excited? Silent. You still there or not? Okay, that's strange. Uh, maybe that maybe that announcement was too mind blowing. You still there, Sean? Oh, oh my God! I can't hear you. Or maybe you're just reading the. Reading this stuff on the website. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't know. 
I don't know. <clears throat> I just worry this is going to be a great tournament. And... Oh well. Oh, okay, that's that's fine. Alrighty. So yeah. Can you not hear me? Uh, I can't hear you. Oh, you can hear. Uh, yeah. Oh, I thought okay. you could. Hear oh, okay, you're just reading stuff. All right. So yeah, I I I do have uh, I do have a lot of profiles about uh about players. Uh, in the tournament, you can learn a lot about their ghost stories, I guess. And uh, I, s I spent a lot of time just like compiling all the all the links, so um, you can visit their YouTube channels, Twitch channels, and stuff. So it'll, it'll be great, and I'm looking forward to this. And this will start in June. Um, yeah, and I'll make a I'll make a forum thread about this. Um, so there'll be more details coming up. All right, so let's actually head to our game, shall we? All right, I'm ready. Alrighty. So okay, I'm going to pop this chat out. Uh, as we, as as we go over the games, feel free to comment uh, in Twitch chat and uh, or or OGS chat if you if you prefer. So it's always a great thing uh, to engage in the conversation, I guess. Um, we're always glad to answer your questions. So here we are uh, with our first game. Uh, this is a game between Titus99 and Eric King. And this was actually uh, a Nova League game. So yeah, let's see what happened in the game. Do you want to start the review or do you want me to? Uh, I can do it. All but right. I'm going to give you the control anyways. <laughs> You're the guest. Alright, I'm in. Uh, Alright. Let's see this. And, uh, yeah, give control. Okay, so I have control ready now? Go. Yep. Alright, cool. You ready to go? Sure. Alrighty, so... This game is a game between a 5Q and a 4Q. And you said it was a Nova League game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you mind going into detail about that a little bit? Oh, yeah. So, um, I, I, I've been promoting the Nova League for quite quite a few months, actually. Um, if, you guys, if you guys know about my YouTube channel, it's actually called the Nova League. So, it's basically a Go League I've been hosting since January. It's still going on. And basically, what we do is we uh, we divide players into uh, classes of um, four to six players, and uh, there are a lot of close matches. And basically, if you win a certain amount of games, you can win some of our awesome prizes and advance to the next class. So it's sort of like a ladder, but um, it's it's based on classes. Uh, so far, this has been incredibly fun. Um, and yeah, this is just one of the, one of the live games played, but yeah, All right. Let's see what happened in the game. That sounds cool. Um, uh, so basically it's like a ladder, a league ladder, I guess, kind of format? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, right. uh, in, in, in each month, uh, you're gonna play, uh, you know, three to five other players. Uh -huh. So uh, each class will have like a round robin setting, uh -huh. and at the end of the month, if you play well, you get to advance to the next class. All right, that sounds cool. Is it specifically OGS or? Uh, yeah, it's on OGS. All right. So th this might have sounded a, li a little bit like advanced study room, but uh -huh. uh, we're we're introducing a few new ideas, like. Uh, our new prizes and the promotion and the emotion system. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's cool. Pretty awesome. Oh, uh, okay. I'm just looking at the game, so just saw this. Movie. People who play in the league tend to be pretty intense. <laughs> uh, so yeah, looking at the game though, uh, I noticed that uh, the five. Q this is a five Q and four Q, but they don't quite yeah. know the Shinseki yet, which is kind of surprising. So for those who don't know, this is actually a mistake. 
Uh, mm -hmm. This is a little too quick to punish, though. Uh, normally, the Jiuseki is uh, this move. When there is a black stone at... Right. Uh, give me the letters. A. The reason... or And then you follow it up with here, 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 and here. Mm -hmm. This is the normal Jiuseki. Right. The reason this Hane is not played is because you can extend down and then cut. Right. And if white tries to save the stone, you go here. And if white and tries what to is that? Away, white actually dies. That's so this is actually tragic. quite painful for white. It's a quite a big mistake. So this is an important mm -hmm. variation for you to remember. Uh, make sure you play it this way when there's a stone at A. Mm -hmm. When I started learning Go, I thought like um, so. So like if white Hane. Uh, and black, black played at like C two. White could have like just connected at D five. Ah, but I don't know. It's it's a, it's a little bit strange. Um, uh, but I I guess it's come to my realization that it's not exactly great for white because first of all, black plays a huge huge corner. That's about like ten points already there, and uh, white is split into uh -huh. two groups, right? Uh -huh. And he will need to settle both of them in the future, which is very hard to do. Basically, according to my teacher, two mm -hmm. is the best move after you make the mistake. But uh, yeah. in the end, this result is favorable for black. And if you lost out even a few points, the result is not a good Joseki. And uh, it's just not worth it. If you wanted to play from this direction anyway, then you should just uh, play this way from the start. Like... Uh, back here. If you wanted that direction, you should just play from this direction. But in this case, it's the wrong direction to play because black can play here. Mm -hmm. So honestly, in my personal opinion, I think white should just play this way. I don't see anything wrong with yeah. this. this. This is a normal Absolutely. move and a normal opening. But if white's going to insist on pincering like this, then he needs to play uh, this Joseki because uh, this one doesn't work. White has no choice. Yeah, yeah so White has no choice but to play uh, this Joseki like this. But perhaps right. White thought this uh, wasn't good enough. And honestly, I'm inclined to agree that I like this better for Black. But that's why I said I would rather play from the start uh, here. But once you play this yeah. uh, Pincer Joseki, you're kind of stuck and have to play the follow-up. What though, if Black jumps good. out? What if Black jumps out after uh, White, White's Pincer? Um, this is a kind of, a. Uh, I don't see this one very often, but uh, basically it plays out kind mm -hmm. of like this, right? Yeah. Um, let's see if I recall this. Because I feel like, well, because well, uh, Black has a stone on Q, he, ha he has a stone on Q3, so, uh, -huh. uh I guess even if Black just follows at M3, M4 and all the way. It'd yeah, be fine. actually, I think uh, Google John made a lecture on this on uh, KGS once, uh, like a KGS Plus lecture. She lectured yeah. on this and said, This is too good for black. It is. Like, it is too good for black. It just It's a good combination with Q3. The influence is very powerful, and white has a lot of Aji. Right. So, honestly, um,. I don't like the one space pincer against the Kobayashi, unless uh, you have some type of some type of plan. But uh, this is actually pretty good. I don't know, but uh, some some professional players don't mind the one space pincer to just mm. throw off their opponent's flow because they don't want them to play with something they're comfortable with. So they'll play the one space pincer for that reason. And I don't know about that, Makes but sense. Uh, normally uh, just responding at two as your first response is quite common. Mm -hmm. So, um, I guess speaking white of did... like speaking of dis disrupting your opponent's flow, so so I, so I was in I was in the Boston Go Open, right? Uh -huh. And one of the games I played was <laughs> was pretty interesting. So, okay, I I tried to play the Orthodox, right? So I was playing as black. I tried to play the Orthodox. My opponent just like immediately approached. So the so the plan failed, and then, and I turned to the other side and I tried to make a low Chinese, 
and approached again. <laughs> I was like, yeah. I was completely like, oh, oh no, what should I do now? Yeah, uh, I've I think I've played a couple games like that myself, where some people just uh, just approach to throw you off. Yeah, but uh, I kind of. I actually kind of like it when my opponent does that because I feel like I got a handicap. <laughs> but yeah, uh, maybe that's my personal preference. Preference. But you also don't have any like, you know, opening pattern to rely on. <laughs> yeah, there's not really an opening pattern, but uh, I try to just keep it simple and take a lot of territory. And I'm a territorial type player anyway. I love territory mm -hmm. and fighting. So yeah. I don't know. I I actually like it when they approach me because I feel like I get a little bit of a lead. But uh, when they play very quickly, uh, it can become difficult to handle if you're not careful. Right. All right, so in the game, Black actually cut a little bit too soon. And why it got to extend down. Uh, oh, he actually ignores. New key. So, okay, so Black actually responded. I would immediately do this because... Right. because why not? Uh, I always tell my students, fix your weaknesses first before Tanuki. Um, so, or I guess, I guess E5 would be fine, too. It, save, oh, it yeah, saves the Atari. Right. Yeah. This is also good. Okay, but I guess um, White does have some endgame follow-ups here. But otherwise... That's also true. It, it's a minor thing. It depends on what you want. Do you care about the influence? Do you care about the points? Uh, I think one's actually probably proper here. I th right, Because cause... points are only local, and this is kind of global right now. And you want to think global thinking in the opening. Right. It puts but, a lot uh, of pressure on the H3 stone, and it, it also... I, I guess it also threatens... What's that? Uh, yeah, it completely fixes Black's position, White's position. Yeah, exactly. Right? And uh, I see nothing wrong with just fixing it. But if he doesn't, it could be quite problematic. Mm -hmm. Like if White comes, something here, or maybe just a yeah. triangle. You never know. Something could uh, something could go wrong here. But uh, right now, I think it's just a lot of Aji. I think Black should still be okay. But uh, mm -hmm. there's no reason to have the Aji. Just just fix it. Uh, so both players play a Joseki here. I don't I think this say, is the, the, on, the only occasion in the opening when you need to save the Aji is when you're... Well, I guess, I guess this applies to life. The only occasion... When you need to save the Aji is when you need when you're eating ramen. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh. I okay, that's a pretty bad joke. Um, <laughs> nah, it's just memories of Korean ramen. Uh, yeah. I had I ate so much. You always talk. Korean. You always talk about the Aji in the soup. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I I was so in Korea, so I didn't talk about a lot of Aji in the soup. <laughs> but I had to eat a lot of ramen. Oh yeah, because uh, I I'm a just, poor man. Just yeah. savor, you know, the algae from the hot water. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so okay, black play at oh at two four. Yeah, I'm not. I don't know what to think about this move. I don't like it. I think just here or here, just play like this seems fine. Right, so that would be a fast paced. Uh, exchange, I guess. Black and Miss Ahane at R3 and uh, and e easily extend on the bottom side at L3. Right. But this variation, I feel like Black put himself in Ahane. He put himself in Ahane ahead of two, which is a powerful shape for White. White also has a cut. I'm assuming that's what Black's aiming at. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'm not sure if this is going to work out for him, though. <sighs> I feel like I feel like White could have just like blocked at S six after yeah. this, right? Okay, I'm Black is guessing. two. Nah, Black. well, no, Black. he can't redo really that. Yeah, 
I think black was aiming at this and white was afraid of this, but it, if you just play here, mm -hmm. now. Yeah, it's a kind of a disaster for black. So I think if white plays uh, at one, black right. doesn't have a move. So I. So I guess so I think, the front. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I think this cuts complete overplay. Mm -hmm. Because this just uh, this just uh, doesn't work. Yeah, I guess the problematic move was uh, Q four. Yeah, just play here. This is actually a common uh, Joseki shape. Yeah. And in this case, you want to you extend on the bottom side the L3 because that not only settles your group, but also puts pressure on the lone white stone and H3. Yeah. So that's going to be a pretty good move. Yeah. But uh, actually, white fixed here. So now it worked. Black got lucky. So it's quite interesting. But these are yeah. five Qs and four Qs, which is actually quite strong considering. So I'm surprised. Yeah. Uh, like the bottom left corner and the bottom right corner, so many strange things have been happening. I think they're just trying really, really hard to win, mm -hmm. and I think they're over trying instead of uh, sticking to basics. Yeah, but uh, I think or they maybe really want to win, but I think they're trying too hard. Or maybe they're just eating too much ramen. Yeah, too much um, ramen. Yeah. So, anyways, people, oh, people in Twitch chat are are like, <laughs> okay, okay, that's that's only a a hypothetical occasion. I'm I don't have any ramen with me at the moment. Um. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> um. I feel like I feel like black in a huge corner, but uh, I mean, isn't it possible for white to invade somewhere on the right side? Yeah, like R twelve. Yeah, something like that. But considering he made a mistake to begin with, I think he this actually isn't that bad a result. I think it mm -hmm. could have been much worse. So it's hard to say. Um, white's also not in a great position. But at the same time, black only got the territory, but white didn't get anything. I think both players messed up, which makes it hard to evaluate this properly. I guess so it's like, you, who messed up less? I guess you prefer black, wouldn't you? On this board, white has Sente, and I think Sente is really important here. But mm. I think I can't evaluate this board until I see what white's going to do and what white's plan is. I still think uh, black's slightly ahead because black doesn't have any weak groups, but white does. Yeah. So I'm looking at the weaknesses on the board, and I think white just has more weaknesses right now. So if, I think my, my opinion is black's a little bit better off. Right, and I, I, guess, I guess the only weak black stones would be, I guess at the moment, will be like Q10 and... Q7, okay, there's there's some room for white to invade and probably split, make a difference. Uh, mm -hmm. But but white also has a lot of weak groups, on not only on the bottom left, but also, speaking of like this, this bottom right group, uh, I mean, I mean, I, I would definitely feel a lot better for black if, if he, if he gets like, uh, P7 sometime in the future, and just basically take white space away. Mm hmm. Yeah, something like that. Well, honestly, I just want to get to here. Oh, that totally. Or, and I want to get yeah. to here, and then I want to get to here. And then I want to go, after I fix all my weaknesses, then I want to start playing a big move. But uh, white, white has a lot of weaknesses too. You can, or you can also be pretty radical and just play at F seventeen. You know. Oh yeah, but um, I'm the. I kind of came up with uh, rules of thumb to on how to approach what to play, and uh, mm -hmm. I tell this to my students. The first move you should look for is. Find your weaknesses and fix your weaknesses first. 
then punish your opponent's weaknesses or attack your opponent's weaknesses to gain profit for free. And then you play the big moves. And I consider F17 a big move. So, mm-hmm. uh, in my opinion, the way to approach what to play is fix your weaknesses first before you ever play a big move. So, uh, you're, you're, you're such a meticulous guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've kind, of, I've kind of tried to make it a science on how to come up with a move, a good move. And I've tried to make it as simple as possible for Q-level players. And once you reach mm-hmm. Dawn-level players and professional-level play, then there's all kinds of exceptions to the rule. But if you just yeah. want a good, acceptable move, I kind of came up with like rules of thumbs that work in 90% of the situations. And here, fixing your weaknesses first seems like a good move. Just uh, if you were black... Just uh, fix your weaknesses and then move on. But if you move on, then maybe these weaknesses will come to bite you in the butt. Mm. Um, as for White, I think White also needs to start fixing his weaknesses. So, for example, maybe here or right. maybe even here. Try so basically just, groups just like linking the groups together. Yeah. But uh, in the game, we see White actually chose this, so White's actually going to look to attack a little bit. And uh, I, think I feel like that's what I would do. It's just to counterattack. Uh, yeah, if... normally counterattack's good to fix your weaknesses. It's just I feel like he has so many, it's going to be hard. All right. Uh, but let's see how this plays out. Because uh, mm-hmm. attacking will get you profit, and it all depends on what it, what kind of profit he gets. Yeah. So he goes here. Right. Uh, so okay. I think this works. This works. First of all. Yeah. This does work. Okay. okay. And then kill. Okay. Kill. Oh. What about a cut? Uh, oh, I this would happen the actually. That's okay. Wait. Yeah, there's no ladder. Uh, let me double check. Yeah, there's no ladder. But what if White no plays net. a C... What if White plays a C... C8 first? Then Hane. Right, and then you... Oh, net. Net. Yeah, there, there's a net. So there is a net. Right? There is a well, yeah. okay. So when so when you play a C eight, I guess the I guess the only option for black is to counter a D eight. A D eight? Nah, 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 nah. It doesn't work. I I was hallucinating. I thought I thought like I, I thought black D eight would solve. Well, yeah, that that also that also gives Black a good result. I'm trying to do this, I, but there's a lot of variations here, actually. Mm-hmm. This is not so easy looking. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is actually quite difficult. So honestly, I can't say for sure what's supposed to happen without reading it very, very thoroughly. This. Does... Oh yeah. Well, that... okay. So if the, if the ladder doesn't work, what guys? Oh. Right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. That according to. Mm-hmm. Hold on. Got it. Got to read my dudes. Go here, 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 here. Da 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 da. Nope. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. Doesn't work for white. Yeah, so in that sense, uh, white will be dead. Yeah, but uh, white can seal black now. Just here. Yeah. Or you and... know what, like, er- you know what, like earlier before before C eight. Uh huh. So, uh, yeah. So like before that, white can just like cap. Uh, well, just do the net at E seven. And then, so like, this gives him better shape. 
<laughs> and yeah, I see that's because because this has a the the second like this. second. Oh yeah, They're... because uh, I here I want to play this, but then black comes right. out. What's worrying me in the in the in this version though is uh, black can push and cut. Yeah, but I kind of just want to give it up. That's also fine. I'm, you, I'm just I trying mean, to you... I'm trying to make the white stones do something. <laughs> yeah, if you think about uh, it more globally, maybe you should actually give up those two stones. Yeah. Um, but here... Let me just read Twitch chat and see what's going on. Uh... Lots of kappas. Um... Oh, Enumerous, are you the one that played this game? Nah, he, he wasn't... Oh, never mind. He was reading something. Does E4... Uh, just kill those two white stones when white played E2? Uh, no. And, uh, no, because, like... Uh, because there's an Atari. And then here. Right. But but after after black uh, connects to C2, then white... Uh, yeah. Now white has Then white is fixed. Yeah. Uh, so. Oh, so um, so you uh, R Rikon was is actually here. He is, he is one of the players. In this game, and I see him in the chat. Oh, okay. Because his alias is Air King. <laughs> oh, I see. So, uh, he's actually he's right. he he's actually been winning. A lot after he changed his name. Maybe I should change my name too. <laughs> Just Maybe change to like change air or something. Down to, I'm down to one Don because I timed out on all of my correspondence games. Oh no. Yeah. That sucks. I completely forgot. I started finals. I finished finals. Got on summer vacation. I was like, I'm free. And then I got online. I was like, You're I'm on summer vacation right now? Huh? You're on summer vacation? Uh, yeah, but I'm working on several projects to try and make some income. Uh, uh, hey, college students, man. You get out much earlier. But you have to work God. a thousand times harder. I guess so, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure what White's doing here. Having, having noticed that... I think White Yeah, because the ladder doesn't work, work right? Yeah, the ladder doesn't work. I don't think White realizes this. So, so I mean, like, uh, so, okay, the, the normal thing when you realize a ladder won't work, uh, the, the normal thing to do would be just basically playing a ladder breaker at 0717, for example, right? Uh huh. And forcing your opponent to respond, so basically capturing the, the three uh, white stones there. Uh, on, on the bottom left, and then you, yes, yeah, so it is like way back. Uh, yeah. Yeah. What about like here? So white plays at O seventeen. Uh huh. Right. So if black responds to this normally, just like yeah. So black would have to follow at uh, D eight to just basically. Um, Cancel this ladder, and then White gets to play an extra move, um, in the in the bottom right corner, just to compensate for the loss. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's a reasonable plan. I th Under the circumstances, yes. Yeah, I think that's the only thing you can do to recover from this. But uh, you never play out a ladder that doesn't work because right. you end up with a bunch of cuts. I th Okay, so White finally realized. 
You know what? Uh, I, I actually wonder I if if the players oh. were under time pressure. On OGS, time pressure on OGS. Uh, Maybe. well, because the games the games here are, are were played live. Oh, I see. Uh, what are the time settings? So, uh, thirty minutes each, and five, uh, thirty second Biogomis. Surely they haven't used thirty minutes yet, right? Maybe they have if they're long thinkers, but uh, normally, you still have time. But uh, uh, yeah, I was, I was actually just wondering if there's a possibility. But uh, normally, I, I think. Uh, I think a good thing to do is to always just like read the ladder, read the yeah. ladders out in your in your mind before actually playing it out. Hello, that Tristan. Just, uh, that that always that always reduces the risk, um, even even if you misread. Yeah, always read so. it out stone by stone by stone by stone. Don't just follow lines. Read it out stone by stone. Um, so this is quite quite painful. White actually has to give up the stone. Mm -hmm. And, uh, play like this. Because if he plays like this, he's gonna die. And he does die. Okay. So, White is not in a good position. Oh, that's, that's horrible. This is this is sort of like the black wins plus resignation. Yeah. Version, I guess. This is this is game over. This is game over. So let's see what happened later in the game. Uh, looks like White tried to do something and another another mess up. Well, oh dear. No, uh, at least try to Atari this first and then go here. Right. So, um, yeah. Oh, that would have actually worked. Yeah, but black right. can counterattack here. Well, uh, well, I guess you you would um, Atari at N six first. At N. Oh yeah, because yeah, you, you, you want to keep your shape, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I didn't think about that. Now that is one letter, which works. For what? Yeah, this is a Mii. If mm -hmm. black goes here, you kill these. Um, if black goes here, this is... Actually, it's just a net. Yeah. I st still, I, still, I wonder if white is going to get all, all the points back from... from just like uh, No, the bottom left huge. corner is too huge. Even if, like, yeah. a couple stones die. Um... Yeah. Yeah, so I think black why, overplayed. I don't know why black just didn't hunt it down. Yeah, I feel like he could just he could have just like kept it simple. And keep it simple. Don't overcomplicate it, especially when you're winning. Just go uh, revert it back to basics. I feel like I, I feel like what would be the what would be a funny thing now is um, if black if white just like. Uh, if 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 white just like throws frustrate moves in frustration, and black realizes this is that like he has lost he has lost it, and somehow white white gets like o seventeen, right? Yeah. And black doesn't realize it, and yeah. then it's game over for black. <laughs> that would be a horrible mis um, mistake yeah. not to not notice this. I, I I feel like I feel like to achieve that you need like a a psychological st tactic. I'd probably <laughs> start here and then try to make this fight run over that. Yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah, yeah. This and then and then this <laughs> just to see if it works. Does that okay, one even yeah. work? This one doesn't even quite work yet. Maybe it just it 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 just doesn't. Yeah, I would, it but if you're going to aim for that, you have to do some type of double sente crap. So, <laughs> quite difficult. Yeah. Uh, I would not be worrying about this. Like, it's a game over situation. You have to counterattack something. Yeah. 
and just like follow Clausius' plan, you know, get a ladder breaker <laughs> when your opponent's <laughs> unaware of. <laughs> Maybe in 30 moves you'll reverse the game. Who knows? Oh, and Black uh, realizes it. Not anymore. So Black actually... So White wasted several moves and even lost points. And Black's like, okay, you wasted several moves. I'm just going to fix this so I never forget. And now White has a, almost no chance. Yeah, uh, so... I would, that's not worth fixing. Just... Uh, you have to counterattack. You have to attack something. Yeah. You're, you're going to lose if you play conventionally. And don't create another weak group. Uh, not sure what his plan is here. Oh, dear. Uh, extra game over. There's, there's, a, there's a lot of like lateral damage here. Yeah, it's kind of making it worse. So I, I, feel, I, I feel like a lot of times when... Like when the opponent captures like one group, like it just, it just, it just, I just feel like he's like incredibly stronger, and it's just gonna keep building and building. Well, it's know, actually it's, more of a psychological thing. Well, yeah, you, that too. You make a mistake, and then you're so aggravated that you can't calm yourself down to play what you should be playing, and then you just make it worse on yourself. And then it gets even, mm -hmm. it's a snowball effect, and it just gets worse and worse and worse and worse. Rather, you yeah. should take the time, calm down, reevaluate the board, and relook for weaknesses and everything like that. Yeah. Um, this is just. Uh, he's trying to get back into the groove of things, but Black's just playing very fast paced now. Mm -hmm. And White's not counterattacking anything. White's still defending, and he's losing. So, this is not going to be a comeback. Okay, so now he's trying to counterattack. Uh, right. This is going to be difficult. I would use my thickness in the center and go here. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a difficult counterattack, especially if you let him make it. West got West got a wall in the center, so I mean, like the only hope would would be to just like capture the two black stones on the right side, uh, Q10 and Q7, uh -huh. and hopefully make a nice make a nice nice wall on the 14th line or the 13th line. Yeah, you, that you know that would I'm be nice. About. But, uh, so he's actually deciding to attack the top instead. Uh, and but the, it's actually forcing white to make, or forcing black to make eyes. Oh, black ran away here. I would not recommend that. Don't make yourself extra heavy. So there's an eye here. There's a counterattack here. So this is actually easy for black, but black's actually going to make it difficult on himself by playing here. He's kind of adding uh, extra stones to it. Yeah. Um, He's just like landing more blows to white right now. Yeah. So there's actually a ladder here, so I would start <sighs> aiming at that from afar. And start mm. trying to get some kind of double attack going. Yeah. Some sort uh, of shenanigan. This is close to what I had in mind. I'd never defend when you're trying to be forceful. Uh, peep, and then maybe... Uh, yeah. Or, or here now. You know, you know, Q14 looks good, too. I'm not a big fan of the high approach to the star point. But maybe it works in this case. But yeah, right? Because if, 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 if Black um, attaches at yeah. R14, then he just basically gives those two stones away. What about here? Would you three three now? Uh, I think I would. I would. That's fourteen, yeah. Okay, yeah. I I, I, feel, I feel like if you, if you approach at R fourteen, he's gonna come at like R twelve anyways, so it doesn't make a whole lot of difference. But okay, I I feel like this is the this would be the the sequence which gives white like a chance yeah point is split split and try to get some attack off you have Divide to attack. And conquer uh just defending but, like this is yeah. not gonna cut it especially if you die um no this group's in trouble 
Uh oh. I mean a white girl because he only has he only has um. Uh oh. Uh, how does this live? I don't I think, think this it can live now. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's dead. That's just gone. Yep. And I think that pretty much seals the deal. There's nothing to come back from two gigantic dead groups. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, there's animation really here. Yeah, so this was the first game. Uh, this was the first request of the game review. And, uh, well, I guess just to sum it up a little bit, um, read. Yeah, read. Pay, play, pay, pay, uh, no. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm finishing. <laughs> just read out the ladders carefully, I guess. And, um,. Play aggressively uh, when you're behind, and yeah. uh, try to split your opponent's groups. Try to make things happen, because uh, I mean, defending when you're behind is never going to win you the game. And last but not least, don't eat too much ramen when you're playing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My advice is going to be <laughs> for white. You have to read more accurately, so I would recommend doing some liberty problems. And uh, to Suji problems, so that should help your local area reading uh, and spotting weaknesses and stuff. I would also recommend uh, not panicking whenever you make a mistake, because it looks like a, a couple snowball effects happened here, where White couldn't calm down after making a, a blunder, and he made an even bigger mistake, and then couldn't calm down after that, and uh, it just kept getting worse and worse and worse. So I think if White calmed down, he actually still had a couple chances to come back, uh, or at least had a fighting chance to make it difficult. But mm -hmm. uh, White, I think White just couldn't calm down is what it was. So I would recommend uh, taking this as a psychological lesson and as some homework, do some Liberty and uh, Chisuji problems. Yeah. Uh, for Black, Black probably should uh, learn some more basic Joseki. Um, and I think that's about it. I think White pretty much was the one who made the mistakes. And it's hard to see where Black messed up because of White's kind of just made it easy on Black to respond. Like, if you get Atari in a ladder, you have to run. It's not really much you can make a mistake with there. Um... But uh, he definitely made a mistake in the bottom right, and White just couldn't punish him, I think is what it is. Mm -hmm. He actually made a mistake at N4 as well, and White didn't punish. So I think, actually, Black also needs some uh, Tsuji and local area reading problems, but rather than uh, applying the Tsuji, I think he needs to hold back. I think he's over trying mm. with the Tsuji stuff. I think he just Black just needs to calm down and revert his stuff back to basic shapes. Right. And I guess just keep it simple when 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 he's leading. Yeah. And uh both players need to learn to Tanuki more often. I think uh right. the whole bottom middle uh in like in three 03 and 4, or not 03, uh, 04 and uh, L6. I think all of these moves are kind of not big. I would try attacking stuff instead. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, no, notice that uh, when we're talking about, the, like, I guess when we're talking about Tanuki, uh, uh, it really depends on what what situation you're looking at because you don't you you don't want to be just like a tanuki like from a very important like corner sequence right so yeah. but what we're saying here is um if, if there's a chance for you to tanuki when nothing urgent is happening then uh you should 
just take your chances and um, probably make make something happen um, elsewhere. Just yeah. uh, just using the power of Sente, basically. Yeah, sometimes a Tanuki can be, uh, instead of capturing these three stones or something, I'm going to go fix this weakness over here. Or I'm going to attack my opponent's weakness over here. Or I'm going to go play this big move here and play the rest of the game. A Tanuki just means to play away from a local area situation. It doesn't necessarily mean to say, hey, I'm going to Tanuki go play this big move when there's two or three other weak groups on the board. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so, yeah, so still, rule of thumb, fix your weaknesses first, right? Yeah. A lot of weaknesses in this game. Are you trying to, like, summarize... Like, the golden rules for Q players? Uh, basically, rule uh, from what I always tell my students is fix your weaknesses first. Then learn how to punish your opponent's weaknesses and sente to gain uh, free profit. And then you can go and play the big moves. But if you can't even fix your own weaknesses first, you're going to have no control over the game. Your opponent's always going to be leading the game or controlling the flow because you're always going to feel like you're defending. Um, but uh, once you fix your weaknesses, you're going to find yourself with uh, the initiative more times than not. And you can usually attack your opponent's weaknesses and gain free profit if you know what you're doing. And if you can't, then okay, you can just go play that free move and not have to worry about things. But uh, if you're leaving weaknesses behind, eventually you're going to run into an opponent that's going to be able to punish those very severely. Mm-hmm. All right. I feel like I actually, actually, uh, I'm actually learning a lot myself. Even, even though I am like the, I, even though we're the ones reviewing, because, um, I, I, I guess, um, I, I've been struggling to find like the perfect balance between Tanuki and not Tanuki. <laughs> Yeah, actually, uh, being a teacher is actually how I came up with these methods of finding a move. Is because people would always ask me, where would you play, where would you play? And then I'm right. like, oh, I'd play here. And they're like, why? I'm like, well, I don't know. My instincts tell me this is a cool move. Uh, and then <laughs> I had to narrow it down to explain the exact reason why I came up with the move versus everything else on the board. And, and I think there, that helps. Narrowing that, that... it down to my thought processes on how I ended yeah. up in this position. Yeah, and I, I think I think that requires a lot of skill, just like being a teacher. And teaching is a great way to actually self improve. Mm -hmm. And because because you're gonna be you're gonna be needing good explanations so that people can actually understand what you're talking about. Yeah, so you, you need have to come to up with good a, reasoning. You have yeah, you have to have a very good understanding of what's happening, and you have to be able to explain it to others. So. Being a teacher is actually quite difficult for the inexperience, but after you do it for several years, I think uh, you'll find yourself learning while you're teaching. Just yeah. because people will be like, why did you play here? I'm like, oh, well, that's honestly a good question. I kind of played here without thinking. Maybe I should have thought this out more or something like that. And then you start finding yourself doing it in the game. Okay, let's play here. Why am I playing here? Uh, what's the reasoning behind this? And then you start applying your own theories and your own... and you. You ask yourself what your students would ask you. Why are you playing here? And then you have to think, why am I playing here? And uh, then you start actually fi fine tuning your moves to with mm -hmm. actual good reasoning. Yeah, that's always good, right? Yeah, <laughs> and th that's why I that's why I set up a tournament to like honor all the teachers. They 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 always they always doing a lot. So, all right. Anyways, uh, we have our second game of the night. I think we still have about. Um, Oh, we have, we have a lot of time left, actually. We have about 40, 50 minutes. So, yeah, the second game should be pretty interesting. And um, I actually just, like, grabbed this fresh from fresh from the English chat uh, just moments before the show started. I haven't looked at this game yet, to be really honest. But then again, this is what I usually do on my show. I just, I just improvise as I go over the moves. Yes, so uh, I'm going to create a review from there. 
don't know if you're in it yet, but I'm in it now. So here we are. That All right. So this pull. is actually between Herbie and Sivart. I think yes. I'm, I'm familiar with both of those names. Herbie especially. Oh, yeah? Herbie's like always very active. Yeah, Herbie's um, been great. He's he's been supporting uh, what what we're doing on OGS, and she's supporting my show. So yeah, yeah. she's awesome. I've seen Herbie around uh, several times, yeah. Yeah. All right, so an 11Q and 14Q. So this is going to be a double-digit Q game, so we're going to see some, right. probably, I'm assuming some non-Joseki. Uh, okay, that's that's cool. That works. So this like is actually the style. taken first move. Um, I don't recommend this for Q players, and le even though it's a lot of fun. <laughs> It's really hard to learn from this. Um, there's no basics applied to this move at all. It's literally, I'm going to play it's, the Simmer it's just like, and fight. It's pure style. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is a lot of fun. And I actually have counters to this, and I know how to use this personally because I wanted to play this in a tournament once, and so I thought of the reasonings behind it. So let's see if I can explain this a little bit. Okay. So the idea of the Tengen is to give you support for invasions and to give you uh, a stone to push your opponent's weak groups towards. So it can help you invade your opponent and it can help you surround and attack your opponent. However, right. as you can see, it does not get any territory. So I you have, so however, basically noticed, give your your uh, your power of Sente you know, in corners and sides away. Because yeah. White gets to play a corner first. Uh, uh, there's a funny Twitch comment that whenever someone plays a Tengen against me, I throw it at the opponent. This is actually a joke in my Go Club. When I am teaching and someone plays a Tengen against me, uh, one time I threw the stone at my uh, the student because I was like, don't play such a such a move when in a teaching game because you're not going to learn from this. Because whenever I face a Tengen or I play a Tengen, I'm going to go all out and win. Because there's nothing to really learn from it. It's just a fun game full of fights. And fighting is my favorite thing to do. So I love creating the most oh difficult fights, destroying my opponent whenever there's a Tengen. We're, so if we're a like... student plays a Tengen, it's no longer a teaching game. So the joke came up because I threw the stone at the student and said, don't do this. Because I'll end up destroying you <laughs> and I'm not going to win. Uh, are, are you so like I to play a proper move? Are you like an intense person in teaching games? Um, like, I like you just go all out. Back. I cut back quite a bit. Uh, I used to be though, but uh, Tengen is—it's not meant for teaching games. It's meant for fun, severe fighting games. Um, right. And Tengen violates all the basic theories of what you should be doing. However, it's quite a fun move to play. I'm not gonna lie. But it's not something you should play against a teacher. And I'm very, very aggressive against the Tengen and with the Tengen, so... Um, I, feel like, I feel like maybe we should play a game with, with, the, with the Tengen, because I, I think both of us are... Game. It would be fun. I'm not sure. <laughs> it would be a life battle. Because both of us like fighting, and... I, I mean, like, yeah, we're, I mean, we're definitely good friends, but, you know, somehow, sometimes we just love... Stabbing each other on the board. Oh, I just can like, be brutal on the go. Board. I can be very brutal on the go board. Just All like, right, so, uh, do do you know do you know who Tyler is? Tyler, yes, I actually lost yeah. him in the last content creators. I was I was so mad. Oh yeah, that that was the upset, right? Huh? That was the upset because you yeah, were C number was, four. It uh, was an upset loss. I really wanted to win that one i was really taking it seriously too and then i messed up something and it completely fell apart and i really wanted to play justin afterwards uh um, yeah i didn't really it's not that i underestimated tyler uh i just kind of went in a little overconfident thinking i was gonna win i was gonna be hard but i was gonna win and face justin so i was really preparing for justin and then i just lost uh -huh. because i messed up and i was so upset because i really wanted to win that game and uh Tyler, uh, he did pretty good. He actually um, did really good against me and punished, capitalized my mistake on my mistake very, very nicely. Um, I will admit, I made a couple mistakes that uh, I shouldn't have, 
and uh, he capitalized on those rather rather well. Um, I yeah. almost made a comeback, and then it just didn't happen, and I was quite upset. But uh, that happens and go. But I think I only get upset when I'm playing very seriously. So that means Tyler actually brought out the very serious Go player in me. So I think that's it. Takes quite a bit to yeah. make me play quite seriously. Like uh, some, you get mad because you care intensely about the game, right? Yeah, that's actually kind of why I don't play seriously much anymore. Because it's really, really depressing when I lose a game I'm trying so hard to win. And uh, teaching games, if I lose a teaching game, I think it's hilarious. I laugh it off. It's quite <laughs> amusing. But if I'm playing a down-level player rated game, tournament game, I take it like it's it's life or death. I'm go- I have to win this game. <laughs> Uh, and when you face me like that, actually, you can tell a difference between my casual games and my tournament games. It's actually like a stone or two difference in ranks because I take it so seriously. But when I lose, oh, I get so aggravated at myself. Uh, it's very, very emotional for me to play uh, a serious game. But I, I get my, uh, my go club says I get quite a bit stronger when I play serious versus when I play them on, at go club. Yeah, uh, I don't really notice it too much myself, but I've heard from uh, my Go Club members that I get a bit stronger when I'm in a tournament. But it's so stressful, though. So Tyler actually plays plays very well in tournaments. He performs. He, he his performance in tournaments are just great. And if you look at his profile on the website, he's actually won quite a few tournaments. Uh, and That's I, I feel. I feel like, yeah. It's probably what threw me off because I played them previously and actually won, uh, mm. and I so that's kind of why I went in overconfident. And it wasn't a tournament though; it was just a casual game, mm. and I think that's what the big key was. I went in overconfident, and he took it a lot more seriously, and it, I just fell apart. Um, so the next game, I'm definitely mm-hmm. if I play him again, I'm definitely not underestimating him. I'm going to take him like even more seriously than I did before <laughs> and try to get my revenge. So. Uh, I look forward to playing them again. You'd be like, we're buddies, but hey, I'm here for a serious fight. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like I said, on the go board, I am evil. Like, in real life, I'll be friends with people. I'm a nice guy. I'll teach you. I'll share my strategies with you. Yeah. You start playing me in a serious tournament game, though, I'll crush your hopes and dreams. Uh, <laughs> oh, I, I feel, I like, I feel like we are kindred spirits. <laughs> I'm very mean and competitive. <laughs> Uh, but I yeah, think we, we got off topic a little bit. Uh, oh, know, yeah, but... Alrighty. <laughs> just from the first move. The first move is quite interesting. Uh, so let's see how Herbie handles this. Um, <laughs> the star point, I usually don't recommend the star points uh, against Tengen. I think the star points are a little disadvantageous against Tengen. But that's my personal opinion. Uh-huh. Uh, aside. Aside. Uh, again, not recommended. Um, I, feel, I feel like... The advantage of a Tengen is actually you can just like dive into the dive into the side like very easily. Yeah, you know saying, like, the side isn't for making points; it's for invading, right? Or it, the, the Tengen <laughs> supports an invasion. I mean, sorry, that uh, the Tengen supports the invasions. Yeah, but the side isn't good for making points, and this isn't an invasion, so I don't feel like this is a good combination here. Uh, I feel like That's just doing cool. something like this is good enough, or maybe even a start point here. And then later, you can make a very nice combination with the Tengen like this. Or... Oh, that looks good to me. Yeah. Uh, or come back and do this. And when White comes here, you can see White's not going to be making hardly anything. And it's very easy to run away with the Tengen support. Yeah. So In that case, the Tengen does matter a lot. Yeah, you have to make the Tengen matter. Otherwise, it's a wasted first move. But uh, I don't like this uh, this second move. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, oh, oh wait for the star point. Oh, that's um, interesting. Asymmetric opening. <laughs> yeah, I don't like White's combinations. You still got to take the game seriously, right? You still got to make good combinations and good territorial stuff and make good strategies. And I'm not really like an either player strategy so far uh, due to the fact that white's not making combinations and black's not making any territory but I'm also a territorial player as well as fighting type player so I really like fighting in territory that's that's my thing I hate being mm-hmm. attacked though <laughs> I, I always <laughs> try to counterattack with a weak group 
Uh, that's kind of one of my weaknesses. If I get attacked, I will try. I will look for a chance to counterattack. Um, okay. And usually I might die. Uh, three star points. Okay. So actually, if Black starts making some three threes, the White Stones will be doing nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so we see a push here. So Black could actually ignore this and take the corner, or he can approach here. That's either one's fine. Okay, so he approaches. Mm -hmm. uh, Ooh. It's interesting. Are we going to see an early fight? But the fight's going to be advantageous because Black has the outside influence, right? Right. Oh, that's not what I was saying was happening. I thought White was going to go here. Herbie K. Herbie's White. Yeah. So I think you meant K4 was a misclick and should have been K3. I don't think it matters. It's still a side move. Uh, I was thinking a split here would be nice to see. Maybe you could do some type of combination here. And if White just uh, lives here, you did get some influence, oh, yeah. and now you can run out here. Or maybe totally uh, you can think about an exchange here. First, see what happens. Mm -hmm. um, or just come out directly. I would I would start a fight here. I would be fighting this. Use the Tengen Stone. Yeah. Um, I don't know about an attachment here. This is usually... This allows the, the chance of a Panuki. Uh, first, first of all, like yeah. that's the first thing I, I, I see. Yeah, but the Panuki would actually cancel some of the Tingen's effectiveness. So I'm not liking that. Um, a connection here. I gotta remember that we're looking at a double digit Q game, not not like a Don level game. Cause after after I saw the Tingen, I started like thinking of all the strategies that could follow up it. But uh like I said, Tingen And then I, you're thinking this, this is the next go Sagan. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, okay, what's the best combinations you can make with this variation and stuff? But uh, let's uh, let me dumb down my thinking a little bit here. And uh, so black, black, I think is trying to make some influence, but the f variations with the uh, Q8, the follow-ups are not going to do what I think black thinks it's going to do. However, white is trying to just connect under, and uh, so I think neither player really knows the variations from Q8. Uh, this is complicated. I, I I thought I thought maybe uh white black could have just played at R R nine. Um, is, is, instead of the Hane, right? Just play at yeah, R nine. I don't like. R nine is easy and simple. Because uh, I really want a three three. Or that. I want to do something with the Q4 stone, because I don't feel like this move is Sente. Maybe even a here. Man, you're tough. Uh, yeah, I'm... I feel like I'm O3, really O3 would be pretty special. Huh? I, I feel like O3 would be a good move, because, like, after... Okay, after this, this exchange at Q8 and S10, uh -huh. Black definitely gains... I, he, he definitely gains more confidence on the outside. Yeah. So now he can just like come back and attack White. Yeah. I really don't like Q4, how Q4 looks Easily. right now. So I, I want to do something to Q4. Um, Alright. But uh, locally... Yeah, I thought this I was guess, dangerous. Uh, Q9 locally is fine. Just maybe Atari here and then Pinsir. Uh, well, actually... Yeah, yeah, that or black can do this. Well, well, if if, if black s eight right, white extends at r at r seven. Black uh -huh. can just like Atari from s seven, like the other way. Oh, right, and just oh. like capture the two white cells, right? No, this ladder is a. False ladder, so... Uh, I'm talking about, like, S11. Oh, 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 you're looking there. Okay, sorry. So you want to go here? Yeah, that would work perfectly for a block. Yeah. Right. I really want to do something with Q4, though. <laughs> I, I really want to attack Hash, Hashtag the money team. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this... 
Uh, this isn't my style. I think it, it's very, it's probably proper. It's defending yourself very nicely. Yeah. But I really want to attack key four. I you just like, want to go all out. So I don't want right to defend the start. Yeah, but I have a Tengen and a star point. I don't want to defend. I want to, I want to attack. I want to use what I've got. But this is my so, style. Uh, so, so, I, so I don't, I think both strategies are fine. It, it, it's, sort of, it's sort of like a cast iron opening. <laughs> yeah, I think... Uh, yeah. Where'd it go? I'm still not used to navigating these branch things on here. Nope. There we go. I think yeah. both strategies are fine. So, it's just different uh, styles. But Black play the S9 again? Yeah. Don't like this one. Wait, now he gets an Atari. Oh, I wouldn't run. Uh, now he gets this. And now attack. <laughs> so I still want to attack. Still pretty good for, for black, I'd say. Yeah, I wouldn't run here, though. This is kind of... This is, this is going to die. Well, huh... Actually, this isn't as easy as it looks, huh? Well, okay, in your, in your previous variation, uh, so, so, so like when Black Ataris and R and R seven, uh huh. I guess I I guess the 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 logical thing for White to do will be just like a, uh capture at R ten. Yeah, you could also right? do this. There, it's just uh, I'll still go here. It's just a few points in game loss. So it depends on what you want. Um, I'm really worried that White's going to go here, here, here like this, and then Hane here, and then jump, and then cut this stuff apart. I'm not sure if this is good for Black or not. I think Black could have done better. Uh, mm -hmm. This is going to be difficult to play out. Ew, what about a honey here? Yeah. Um, my brain is my brain is fried from all the complexity. I I think uh I think if um let's see. Definitely here. Definitely here. Yeah. Definitely here. Uh. So, so far, what I can see is uh, both players are really into local area stuff rather than global stuff, which is quite common in double digit queues. It's really too much to ask for them, for a double digit queue player to think of global thinking. It's too difficult. Uh, yeah. However, their local area reading does need some work. So, I would recommend that these two play some, replay some older Japanese games and then do some Go problems. That's basically all they need to do. Is keep mm -hmm. playing games, review them, review older Japanese games for good shapes and good sequences, and do some Go problems. Get their reading up there. Improve I their guess, reading. I guess follow the rule of thumbs, right? Yeah, but the problem with double GQ players is they don't know the rule of thumbs. So normally you have to read books to learn these or get mm -hmm. teaching games or get lessons. Uh, and that's one of the things I'm trying to fix with my lectures and stuff is I'm trying to teach the double digit Q players the rule of thumbs that they don't know. Single digit Q players I kind of expect them to know it and I'm teaching them how to enforce it or how to apply it but the double digit Q players they just don't know the strat common strategies and common shapes yet and I think the only way to fix mm -hmm. that is books and teachers because how else are you going to learn it? Right. Um, just basically like uh, just like the basics, I guess. Yeah, just the basics. <laughs> I I just I just said I just said basically the basics. Um, yeah. So I think those are the almost like the the building blocks in a battle, I guess. And, yeah, you have uh, to understand what's happening. If you don't understand what's yeah. happening, you can't fight it out. I I I have this conjecture that uh, like. The mid game is still like the most important part of the of the game for the for double digit players, because uh -huh. I uh I, I see a lot of 
uh, intense fighting. Uh huh. And um, and sometimes related to like, you know, local local positions which require good reading. Um, and yeah, that's. I feel like that's that's a that's a theme. That's a common theme that I find in many WWQ games. They have intense battles, so it's it's pretty much oh it's pretty much all about the mid game. Yeah. Sometimes the few second matters, but not really. I like think the if you're a double digit Q player, if you yeah. can make territory and do life and death, live and kill. If you can make territory and live and kill, uh, yeah. kill them if they invade you, and live if you invade them. If you can make territory and live and kill, you're gonna win. As a double digit Q player, I think that's all you need. Mm-hmm. And that'll get you pretty much to like 10Q. And then you have to start learning some other stuff. But if you can live and kill and make territory, you're pretty good. Just, just fight like Pac-Man. Thoughts on Go Book of Preaching Blossom Spring. I, d- I am not familiar with that book. What is that? Awesome. They asked, what's your thoughts on Go Book of Preaching Blossom Spring? I haven't read that book. Oh, wait, 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 yeah. Okay, I, I know exactly which book you're talking about. Uh, I mean, so, okay, let me explain this. So, it's actually a Chinese classic. Um, uh-huh. And I, I, I think I, ha- I have the files. I haven't looked at it exactly, but if I recall correctly, it's... Um, actually, what is it? It, I, I mean, because like uh, ancient books in China could be either about like uh, some, you know, some old uh, Fuseki patterns or just like game records pretty much. So <laughs> it's funny because I actually translated uh, this book called The Book of Forgotten Worries. And it's actually in, it's actually in the OG's public section right now, and uh, like oftentimes in in the classics, you just see like a lot of fuseki. It's it's really interesting. You okay. see like how how like the, the the people the people like a thousand years ago thought about this game. But anyways, uh, so Tristan Wolf brought it up. Uh, tell us more about it. Uh. Cause I I I need to look it up. I guess I had the files, but I just don't remember where I put them. I think I think I want to make a series where I do like product reviews of books and go boards and stuff. I think I should I should do that. I, I, should, should we should we start it? Is I think I could probably do some uh, product reviews, and I think people would like that. Yeah. Should Should we start a you know, series on just like analyzing classics? Uh, I meant like uh, Go books in general, like the Elementary Go series, the Fundamentals of Go, and uh-huh. just do it's like before people buy stuff, I could buy it first, read it, and tell people what I thought about it, and then say, is it worth getting? What level is it for? All that good stuff. Mm-hmm. But uh, anyway, um, back to the game. <coughs> Basic variation here. Uh, I don't like this move. Don't hate this move. I I don't know. I, I'll I'll accept this move. A tanuki. Okay. Uh, so why is being very proactive now? So that's cool. I like proactive. Uh, I wouldn't recommend that. I would just say so, kick, right? I wouldn't mm. recommend that either. I think white needs to play here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I would play here. I'm really worried that if you kick, I th- right. think I could play here immediately. Oh, wait, yeah? Uh, what, what if what if white B16? Um, I'm trying to see if K... If this works with uh, K17, I know it works with H17. It would definitely work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But K17 does this still work? Right. So if we play it here, because I mean, like my my point is, if if 
black just you know extends at d14, then white gets a sente. Move. Right? Yeah. At least for now. And um, in, that, in that sense, it's slightly better than, than b16. Because uh, even though b16 does give like a very solid corner, it's in Gote. But this one, I kind of also really want this move if you play this way. If you, like, would you choose Well, yeah. That, that, is, that is on. Uh, I guess I would just play at 0 017. And you know what's one move I really I re want to play? Uh, Where? I just feel like I just feel like poking around at Q seven, you know. <laughs> Q seven. Yeah. As white or black? As as white, because black shape is incomplete. Oh yeah, so, yeah, yeah. But I think white owes more attention to the corner. I really think this is a good move for black. Yeah. Well, if you have Q seven, then yeah, it's if definitely Q seven. Yeah. Right. I think both players need to fix their shape. Yeah, and that's the point. If if you like, if you get this, if you get the chance, uh, for for a sente move, you should definitely just go for it. Because yeah. I mean, like the the top the top left corner still has some sort of agi. Uh, but yeah, Q seven. Oh my God, you can't miss that. But yeah, but anyways, um, okay, white play that. D fourteen. Yeah, this is kind of strange. Uh, it looks like White wants some influence to attack K seventeen, but it's really hard to attack K seventeen with the Tingen. Oh, this and, is this is something. So this just happened. Huh. That actually works. Fight. Uh, I wonder. Place. I wonder if Black could have just you know. Uh. I mean, yep. like after 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 white, black has to go here. Yeah, that would be like what's what's it called? Honte. Uh, Honte. Yeah, Honte. Uh, this... I I was I was hesitating Oops. just like for just a second, cause like, cause like Honte in uh in French means um. Like embarrassing. So, <laughs> I, uh, I was when, like, when you don't play Honte, it's very Honte. <laughs> uh, like so, it, when so you don't like play in Honte, French, it's very embarrassing. Yeah. So like in French, you see like, it's like uh, uh, some some of the aunt. So it's like, this just makes me feel embarrassed. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, um, yeah, I feel I feel like uh, C C thirteen. Is like the logical thing to do, and this just makes life a little bit more complicated. Yeah, it's locally it's good for white. Globally, I think it's really still hard to say. Tingen's becoming more and more useless. I feel like, but uh, yeah, slowly but surely, white's starting to catch up and get a lead. So black really needs to attack some weakness with the Tingen. And I think he should start at R17 now. So let's see. That's not the move to play. Definitely not the move to play. Definitely not the move to play. Never force your opponent to fix something. Yeah, because you'll just be helping them. Yeah. Alright, so now, get back, attack the white's weakness. Or do that. that that's fine, too. Uh, Why well, I got to fix it. So, Black's not using the Tengen. I think Black is not aggressive enough to use the Tengen Stone. So, it's fun, but you got to follow it up with the proper follow-ups. That's why I normally recommend that you don't play Tengen as a Q player. Because you still yeah. got to learn how the game works. Um, and I mean, I like after you, still a lot of basics to learn. Yeah, I mean, like after, after White captured those three Black Stones... Black's Tengen power is greatly diminished. Yeah. He's he's not utilizing his Tengen at all. And why is just slowly fixing everything? Yeah. So this is why we say like in the in 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 the in the in the go proverb, uh 
so you take the golden corners and uh, the, the silver what's it called the silver sides uh -huh. I'm sorry I'm just like I'm just like translating from it like <laughs> like literally um yeah so uh the corners are always like the easiest to take and yeah. uh, then there are the sides and final and lastly the the center because it's just like open space. Uh, you're you're not you're not gonna just guarantee control. Uh, over over center, but it's like playing attendance though. In fact, you're far from. Yeah, the tingin is not for point, not for basics. It's for controlling the flow of the game. That's basically what it's for. And I think a lot of players think the Tengen is good for Moyo. This is false. The Tengen's good for fighting, not for Moyo. It's not meant to build a large framework. It's meant to fight with. And I think that's what the players here are thinking. Is like I see White here trying to reduce the influence of Black's Moyo. There's not a Moyo there because he has a gigantic Ponuki on the top left, more or less. Um, but... White, you can see white here is trying to reduce black, it looks like. But this is not the right idea. There's not a Moyo here. It's not what the Ting and Stone's supposed to do. The Ting and Stone's meant to attack. And I think all white needs to do is just start slowly fixing his weaknesses, and white has more points than black. Yeah. And, wait, does white have Komi? He does. He yeah, does. So she does. Six, uh... Right, because because Herbie has like a six point five advantage for for playing as yeah, white. Yeah, so Black's not attacking anything and not making territory. So I think it's a like yeah, that's the thing. Like six point five is a huge. It's a huge Komi. It's like half a quarter. It's like half a decent quarter. So yeah. Uh, this is what we now we now just say like go is like, you know. It, it, it can be sometimes stressful because Black has such a huge coming. He just tried to squeeze the best out of out of his moves, and yeah. this is why we we usually don't see this Tengen in pro games. Uh, it's very I, difficult. I mean, yeah, I mean, like the masters of, of the twentieth century, they they had great style. Don't get me wrong, they had great style, and I absolutely admire like their 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 opening patterns, but. Like, I, I I guess when I guess when you you are facing a huge Komi, uh, what I, I, at least what I would favor is like cash. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like terrible. Or Sente cash. Like, <laughs> Sente cash. That's awesome. That's just that's the that just sounds cool. Sente yeah. cash. But Thank yeah, you. so the, this is why a lot of a lot of players today are more territorial than uh, sure. than 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 influence based. Even though there's like a there's like a mix of both influence and territory. Yeah. Anyways, um, uh, here you can see White trying to reduce again. White should just defend. Cause, cause I mean, if White doesn't defend, Black can just go into three three, right? Right, and that's his base and his territory. There's no territory in the center here. The center is very small. But black actually defends. So, yeah, I think the players here just don't really have a concept of what's happening yet. And it, it, they just they need some more basic knowledge. They need to study some books, go over some pro games, learn some basic uh, variations. I think they should uh, try and keep playing their own level, but also get some teaching games. Like, mm -hmm. teaching games are always helpful for double digit Q players because it gets an, having uh, someone stronger than you explain the game to you is usually very helpful. Uh, books mm -hmm. are also great. So I think that's what I would recommend for these players. And keep doing Life and Death, because if you can't read, you can't play. Right. So white, so white capped from above. Uh, okay, black did the logical thing. Uh, G17. Yep. I think uh, White's trying to surround and cancel out the Ting and Stone, but I don't think she realizes that the Ting and Stone's already been canceled out. Yeah. This does nothing. This is a pointless move. 
this, like, because this doesn't make territory, right? It doesn't make territory. There's no influence. It's not reducing. No. It's not building. I think it does nothing. Uh, here's another nothing move. There's Mei to connect here. I wouldn't worry about it. I really want to get to here, defend this, uh, defend this, maybe even here. But uh, this is in kind of Dame. It's maybe like three or four points. It's very small. I, I, I thought I thought uh, White was trying to make some like territory. Uh, like I thought some she small was chunk of territory. Or there. making some small territory. I don't know. It seems really small. Uh, this is interesting. Oh, but that that's that's good. That's pretty good from White. Uh, yep, 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 yep. And bam, points. That's points. nice. So another misread, you can say. Hashtag the money team. Once again. <laughs> I, I, I don't know why I'm I, I don't know why my mind is still on that box um, anyways <laughs> uh, no reason not to Tiger's Mouth actually yeah there is a reason not to Tiger's Mouth Tanuki this local small stuff is a common common uh, mistake see this oh, is all wait, small, wait. small 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 I mean I think this is all point. you can Tanuki almost every single move here oh that's dangerous that's oh wait, 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 wait. Okay, so here I would tanuki. I wouldn't even care, right? But as soon as you start investing, it becomes more and more problematic. Now you've got issues. Now you just made it an investment, and now your investment's dying. Don't invest in unnecessary weak stones. They're just two stones. Who cares? But as soon as you invest more stones, it becomes a very, very potentially big group. So, don't invest uh, in unnecessary stuff. Does that just, like, increase your, your risk of, of uh, losing lost. points? Yeah. And now, White lost out more than she should have. So, I guess Black is not out of the game just yet. Uh... Black made a comeback with that, but still, I think White's still I'll ahead. I still, I still think White's ahead. White really needs to get to like S three though, because that's quite big. Yeah. Oh. Uh, this is center before side. Though it's quite potent, I guess. I I would rather go here. Yeah. I think she's worried about this, but now do it. Um, I'm half tempted to ignore this, but maybe it's big. Which, which, by the way, uh, this shows the difference between white getting. I'm hearing an echo. I don't know why. Is it, um, which, which, by the way, shows the difference between like uh, white getting J. Uh huh. And black getting J3. It's like, uh, shape wise, it's just like, it just makes huge difference, I guess. Yeah, and, and you could have played J3 instead of losing two more stones at like, uh. Right, 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 right. Would it be better for white there to play the O11 stone at O12? O11. That's a black. Oh, O11 at O. This was earlier. Just don't play there in general. Like, it's not even worth playing there in general. I wouldn't even worry about it. Uh, White's definitely investing here. White might die if he's not if she's not careful. But Black might also die. So I, feel like Black's, I feel like Black's more vulnerable because, like, uh, White has, like... Yeah, she, she, she has, uh, she has sent him who's, like, N2. Yeah. Yeah, Tiger's mouth is usually the vital point. Yeah. Uh, this is going to backfire. And it backfired. Turns always, out that always take the liberties if you can in a potential capture race. The liberties are very important. If you can take the liberties, take them. I feel like, I feel like though because like white white's 
uh, three stone capture, uh, or like, like how do you call this? The super duper Kanuki. Uh huh. And um, it's great like, fighting power, right? He's like so. Uh, I mean, like she just she she just has like so much, uh, so much thickness around yeah. the area. The yeah, Panuki is really great fighting power. It's even stronger than a Tengen. Yeah, so, yeah. I I think the Panuki here caused Black to die, and I think Black's dead now. I don't think White could uh, possibly lose us. As as long as White lives. Uh, as long if White just gets eye shape, I think White's gonna win the capturing race. Yeah, just like P P two suffice, right? Oh yeah, if White just lives, it's easy, huh? Yeah. That would be a co. That's life. Yeah, uh, well, black, black Q two. Oh yeah, yeah, the liberties, the liberties are a problem, huh? Just like P two is fine. White can live. Here. Uh, that's P one. P two. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Right? Yeah, yeah, yep, yep. Nice and simple. Yep. In that case, Matter Black's what. dead. Black's dead, yeah. Black's dead. Huh. Black is completely dead. No escape, no eyes. Uh, dot, 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 dot. And here you can see the 14Q is better at reading than the Fordon. I was wanting ah. to play P1. Actually, this works here too. It will work. This, th that will work too. Ha! <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, yeah, this one's probably a little <laughs> better. <laughs> uh, okay, but she lived. So, game over. Yeah. And resign. And Black resigns. So, very nice win by Herbie. Uh, I think the reason Black lost this game is because Black had no idea how to use the Tengen. Black played Tengen for fun and had no idea how to follow it up. So I would just recommend not playing the Tengen because you don't know how to... You kind of just don't know how to play the game yet. You don't know how it works. Read some books, stick to basics... And figure out how the game, the general stuff works first, and then you can figure out how to use the other stuff. I think right. even the low Don level players can't play the thing correctly. These are Dons. Like, I struggle to play the thing correctly. I, I, w I wouldn't start with Tengen, I guess. I, I, I would, I would do that like a few years ago, but. Now I'm I'm much more like territory minded. Yeah, I am. I I'm start think Tengen's like flipping a coin. That's pretty yeah. much how the match is gonna go. Uh, like, I come at me. I played <laughs> Tengen once in a competition, and that was only because I was very aggravated and I need something to calm myself down. I knew I wasn't gonna play well, so I was actually one buy and one loss, and there was only two more games for the tournament. It was like a small little local tournament, and actually, I was kind of actually upset because I got a buy, didn't even get to play, then I finally got to play, got a loss, and I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm going to play Tengen. I'm not going to win the tournament. I want to have some fun, and I want to I enjoy <laughs> the game. So I played Tengen in a tournament, and I won. And then I cheered myself up after that and was able to go into the fourth game in a much better mood, in a much uh, uh, better, better form. form, yeah. And then the fourth game, I just destroyed and so I actually went two and two in that tournament thanks to the Tengen psychology psychology turnaround. So yeah. the Tengen actually saved me that day because I was in such a poor mood. Wait, uh, wait, uh, a, a, a buy is a loss? Huh? Wait, did, I actually you said, won with the Tengen. No, no, like uh, you said, um, you went, you ended up like getting two two in the tournament. Okay, so basically, uh, the tournament, the way it works, is buy is worth more than a loss, but it's worth less than a win. Yeah. It should be a win. By other tournaments in different fields, a buy is worth a win. 
But if you think about it, a buy not being as valuable as a win is practically a loss when you're comparing to someone who got to play that fourth game and actually got a win. So, for example, right. if I win one game, uh, or if I win two games, lose one, and get a buy, and someone else wins two games and loses two games, then... Um, I think the way the North Carolina ruled it was the 2-2 who actually played was worth more than me. I forget how it worked. But the buy is basically a loss in that tournament and those rules. Uh, how do you, how do you get a buy? How, how do you get it? Like It just it was an odd number of people. And That's right, unlucky. <laughs> yeah. I really, really hate the rules of that tournament. Uh, because, uh, twice, uh, I go to the tournament like every year, twice I have lost out on prize money due to their rule sets. Once was because of the buy. I didn't, uh, oh, hey Herbie, we just finished your review. <laughs> um, but once I didn't get money because of the buy, another time I didn't get money because uh, the second place people, there was a three-way tie for second place of 2-2-2-2-2-2. But uh -huh. because uh, one guy uh, won his second round, I lost my second round. But I played him in the third round and beat him. But since he won his second round, he got the prize money I did. What? And even though I beat him in the third round. It's kind of a nice... Okay, you know what? It's, it's North Carolina. Don't even worry about it. Yeah, but it, <laughs> it was money, and I and uh, I, it cost quite a bit for me to go to North Carolina. And I was like, you, so happy. You went all the way. You went all the way to North Carolina. Yeah, and then uh, and then uh, due to some rule sets, I I don't get money. You drove all the way. Yeah, we carpool from Tennessee. Our go club goes every year, so we carpool. And uh, go play in the tournament. I've gotten first place in the uh, single digit Q to load on division once. Uh, in the load on division, I've gotten second place and third place. And now I play in the open division, the top division. And I think the best I've done there is like third or fourth place. So you know, send, send me your achievements. I need to put I need to put those in your profile <laughs> on the website. Well. I don't. It's it's really it's a small local tournament, but okay. I don't know. I've played in many tournaments over the years. Uh, yeah, it's fine if you don't. Yeah, yeah, it's hard to keep track of everything I've ever done in the Go world, considering I've played this game for like eight years. It's so, considering that you're so good and you've done so much. Please, aren't you like higher rating than me on OGS and calling me good? Whatever. I lose to two dons and one don well, in six years. You, you have a you have a higher AGA rating than me, so <laughs> AGA rating is so weak. <laughs> it's so weak. <laughs> I'm probably like five don or six don AGA. Uh, I think I'm confident I could stand up to some AGA six dons, but I'm probably AGA five don. Oh yeah, but. Uh, I think AJ Fordon is slightly weaker than me. I actually, AJ Fordon's like KGS one don, mm -hmm. maybe two don. Like the AGA system is really weak. Um, there was some. There's then there's always the old guy, who's kept the same rating for ten years, and he just gets destroyed by everyone else. <laughs> uh, -huh. uh -huh. I played. I played some young Fordons who were very strong because they entered as their KGS rank. And then I played the old guy Fordons who were like one Don, one Q on KGS, and I destroyed them. AJ is really hard to know how good you are, but the rating systems are kind of messed up. And it's better to overrate yourself in AJ <laughs> than underrate because you want, the, you want the competition in these tournaments. The AJ yeah. tournaments, you don't get to play very often. You want the competition. So I usually think it's better to overrate yourself by one or two ranks. Maybe maybe one rank if you're unsure. If you're sure and it was too easy last time, go up two ranks. Um, and that yeah. way you can get the competition you deserve, considering you're paying so much money to go play in it. 
Yeah. I feel like okay. Here, here's what happened. I, I, I went to I went to Boston Spring Open. I won my division, right? So, um, but I, 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 I actually, I actually signed up just like, uh, according to my AGA rank. I like I didn't over I didn't overrate myself. Uh-huh. Uh but I mean like I, I mean when I realized that you get like one sixty bucks if you win like the top division. Uh I I just like I still sorta of regretted just like competing in the in the second division even though I won. I yeah. mean it's still pretty nice, like I I got I got a hundred bucks, still pretty awesome. But like, um, I really wanted that one sixty. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you see what I mean. When real money's involved, you really want that win. <laughs> you stupid tournament rules can really kind of screw you over if you're not careful. <laughs> that that money becomes quite important when you're paying a lot of money to go to these things. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then some tournament rules mess you up or cost you sixty bucks or cost you like a hundred bucks. Like, yeah. it cost me quite a bit of money. Exactly. So, yeah. Um, well, there's going to be some sort of prize money in, in this tournament, actually. Uh, oh, I've I'm been, not going to win that. that. There's no way. Oh, but I, I'm, I, I will, I'll, I'll make sure that everyone gets some sort of prize, uh, even though, like, even though they're, they, they could be small. But um, hopefully that will be a source of motivation for people to stay in the tournament. Um, yeah, anyways. Um, I just want to kick everybody's much. butt. That's my motivation. <laughs> I'm it's, a, sure it's a competition. Can... I I have to beat everybody. I I think I have faith in you. Uh, just like getting through to the knockout stage. I I'm confident. I'm gonna try not to be overconfident like I was uh against Tyler because obviously yeah. that backfired. So I'm gonna take it a much more careful approach. But I'm I'm. I think I can make the single elimination part, and from there it's going to be quite difficult. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna. My goal is hopefully, uh, may, hopefully like top four is my goal. If mm -hmm. I can even get there, I consider that a win. Like top four, if, top four will be pretty, will be pretty cool. Yeah, top four is going to be really hard with the competition because uh, half of these 32 players are all <laughs> my level. <laughs> So yeah. getting to the top four I, is to me is going to be like first place, but getting first place is going to be impossible. There's no way I can beat uh, freaking uh, what's his face. <laughs> hit girl seven. Yeah, hit girl seven. Um, Mark Crazy five. Man. Like Justin, I think. Honestly, oh, Justin is actually Justin not maybe in. Once. <laughs> I think Justin. I have like maybe a one and. One in four, one in five chance. Maybe <laughs> I can pull out something, but Justin's, <laughs> Justin's pretty darn hard. Uh, if I can beat Justin, it'd be great, but I'm not so optimistic about my chances. And then there's players that are even stronger than him in this. No, there's no chance I'm getting first. No chance. But if I can get top four, I'll be pretty happy. Yeah. It's going to be quite an exciting tournament. You're, you'll actually be playing Starstorm and. Uh, the final between him and Justin is actually still going on. Uh, the last game was quite a while from now, but uh, so I, I don't know if you've been following this, but uh, the score is actually now one one. Yeah, I saw. Uh, I actually saw the video of where he beat Justin. I was, I thought it was so funny. <laughs> because I'm like, why, Justin? I I really wanted to play you. You were like my goal, and yet you're losing to other people. Don't be losing to other people. You're making my goal. You're crushing my hopes and dreams, making my dreams look like kind of <laughs> smaller now. <laughs> making my dreams less less dreamy and more like kind of not as potent, I guess. <laughs> well, hopefully you'll crush other people's lives and dreams in this tournament. This is gonna be, I I hope a really fun one for you guys. Is and, uh, Josh I hope not you guys... playing in this? Is it Potosai or D Y R one? Uh, D Y R one. I think he is. Uh, he's still commentating. Oh, yeah. but I know he's commentating. But I really wanted him to play as well. 
I, I know, right? Uh, I'm, I'm not. Sure. I'm not sure. I don't think he's playing in this tournament. Honestly, uh, he's kind of one of the people I would like to face. He's quite good. Mm-hmm. I would. I would like to face him and see how strong he really is because I. I've never gotten the chance to play him, and I yeah. think he's a bit better than me. Uh, at least in basic knowledge, is I think he's better than me. But I think my fighting spirit could probably keep up with him, and I really want to see how far I could go against him. I think uh, it it would be a lot of fun to play. Arwen. yeah, in a in a serious tournament type setting. Um, yeah, I, I actually, game, I think it would kick my butt. I try to get, I try to get a, uh, as many as many people to join this tournament as possible. But uh, I mean, well, some of them are not with us in this tournament because uh, you know, like sometimes uh, life happens, <laughs> and we're we're all we're always busy, I guess, uh, so, uh, Dwayne's not there, uh, Justin is not there, uh, I think, I don't think Jerry Shen is there, he's a really good streamer, I, I love his videos, um, oh, yeah. but, it's, I, I guess it's always good to see, like, the, the number of people streaming just, like, growing, because, um, when, when I was, when I was trying to find, like, people to invite, I was really amazed at like how easy the task turned out to be, because like so many people were streaming, and uh, there's so many like just like recommendations when I when I when I um, talk to people like who do you think we should uh, we should consider, and I'm just amazed at the, by the fact that there there's so many streamers uh, who make basically go go videos of thing. And that's that's really cool. That's really awesome. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. Actually, uh, we we talked about two games. Um, okay, there was a lot of roasting, but um, yeah, I, I I we're we're just trying to basically talk about uh, what we think is right. And um, if if you guys have any questions, please let us know in the in the chat. Um, so I'll, I'll obviously be posting this uh, on YouTube as um, as I finish this broadcast. And Mars asked, "Why is Ty Ty uh the call them anti from three K down in the rank comparison chart?" Uh, glitch? I don't know. <laughs> I don't play on Ty Jump. Yeah, I don't play on Ty Jump anymore. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, um. Well, um, I guess that's it for tonight. Uh, thank, thank you guys so much for, uh, for, for joining. Uh, it's been, it's been truly awesome. Uh, and glad to see Klaus Kla- is joining us. And I hope you'll be back sometime in the future. Yep, sure. Y- you you probably that. noticed that I, I changed a lot of things, like my, uh, my Twitch screen and stuff, because <laughs> like, because uh, I remember when we did the show last time, uh, I was still trying to get used to like Twitch, uh-huh. and and it was really funny, because uh, <laughs> okay, my, my my first time streaming, I actually lost the broadcast. It was like the most horrible thing ever, <laughs> but like, yeah, just for some reason. But I I feel like I've I've matured. Over, over the past few weeks, and um, I'll give you yeah. a little bit of advice. As soon as you learn how to do uh, uh, re- region capture on a window, it will like mm-hmm. change your world. <laughs> region capture? Oh region yeah, capture on a window. Because I, because I, I, I saw you guys doing that. I just like, I just, I just haven't got the time to explore it yet. I learned how to do that a few weeks ago, and. I'm like I can't not do it anymore. It drives me nuts if I don't do it anymore because it actually raises the quality of the video so much. Just okay. uh, if you get a nice background and then do some region capture, it it'll change your world. At least for the video quality. Audio quality I had to actually buy a mic. And then content quality, well I'm still working on that one. <laughs> <coughs> All right. Well, thanks so much, guys, for watching, and this is XG98. 
uh, if you like to subscribe to my YouTube channel.